fishing, go fishing pretty day. He may look like your average outdoorsman, but Steve McAdams is king. And this is his castle. Kentucky Lake is the largest reservoir in the TVA's chain of lakes, stretching 184 miles southward from Kentucky Dam to Camden. Steve has literally lived on these waters for the last 28 years, running his own guide service and winning a national crappie championship in the process. To me, and to a lot of other folks, you're a legend on Kentucky Lake, whether that's bass or crappie or whatever you're fishing for, but certainly for the crappie. I mean, you're a seminar speaker, you're an author, you're a guide. I mean, you are, in my mind, the king of Kentucky Lake. Well, most people have a good job. <laughs> Drop down and there he was. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Start the morning off right, my friend. <laughs> How about that? You know, depending on what part of the country you go to, Steve, I've heard crappie called specks. And here on Kentucky Lake, they call them crappie. Some of the northern states, calico bass. and all the Carolinas, they say crappie. But that's just a disposition you get in when you can't catch a crappie. <laughs> Come here, chunk. Good little fat fish. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Not a hog, but he'll eat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a dandy. Hey, a nice one. You know the folks with big mouth on that fish? It, yeah. That uh, looks like a bass almost. Folks, you might have noticed I've, uh, we've been tipping with a minnow here on a jig. A lot of people just fish a jig only, and I took my skirt off a while ago, but I'm adding a minnow to it, a little shiner minnow that we like to use. I like a shiner better than a toughy because it closer resembles a thread fin shad. And that's kind of the forage base for crappie here. The crappie are big here, sometimes up to two pounds each. They grow fast too, thanks to an abundant food source, in this case, minnows. Lunch is served. The 10 inch size limit also contributes to bigger fish. I want your big brother. <laughs> I'm gonna let you go for you'll send him back. This species thrives around structure. So over the years, Steve has sunk over 300 stake beds and brush piles to serve as fish attractors. Here's what it looks like on your depth finder. Well-defined, as you can see, there's several different characteristics that you'll make it very visible that it is a stake bed. What do you do if you come to a strange lake and you don't have a guide? How do you find out where to start to fish? One well, of the best things you can do is to paint a topo map from your local dock or resort area. Study a map and look at creek channels, ledges, things of that nature. Once you find that situation, keep a buoy marker handy with you and toss one out for a reference point. You might find a creek channel, a ledge, a school of fish on your depth finder, but you gotta be able to stay there, keep some of these handy in the boat, toss them out. Oh man, that is a very nice fish. You don't laugh if I fall in, would you? Woo, way to go, Joey. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Joey. Yes, sir. Don't let me catch you leaving them streams up there in Middle Tennessee and coming down here on my house. <laughs> I was looking at some property when I was coming in. <laughs> yeah. I got some waterfront over there, I'll tell you. Is it underwater? Yeah, it's underwater. <laughs> certain times of the year. A day out in Kentucky Lake makes me realize how blessed we are to have such a tremendous fishery. And an abundance of crappie means we can take a few home tonight. I'm Joey Monteleone on Tennessee's Wild Side. I'm Tom Perdue, the Wild Side Gourmet, and this is Miss Phyllis. And today we're cooking southern fried crappie, Miss Phyllis. One of my favorite dishes. And what do we got on the side of it? I am getting ready to mix up some honey hush puppies. I have cornmeal in my pan. I'm going to add some buttermilk. And I'm also going to add an egg that I've got already here. We're going to just dump this in. And then the secret ingredient, honey. If I need a little more, Tom, you may prop me behind. I have some onions I'm gonna put in. But you have to be real careful with these hush puppies when you're cooking them because they will actually burn when they're in the pot. And if you're not careful, they will stick and be really, really bad. But if you make them nice and small, they are just absolutely wonderful. You're just gonna set this to the side because these actually need to rise for just a couple of minutes. We're gonna make these nice and small. Let's see if we can get that ready. Is that perfect or what? It's looking mighty fine, Miss Phyllis. All right, we're going to prep our fish now, Miss Phyllis, and we've started off with two cups of self-rising cornmeal. We're going to add about a tablespoon of red pepper, about a tablespoon of garlic, a little white pepper, and I would recommend that you do your pepper to your taste. Definitely. And just a little bit of 
black pepper there. We're gonna stir that up just a little bit. We're gonna cook these crappie today with the skin on them, Miss Phyllis. And so why are you doing that? Well, there's just a little special taste that we find in that skin. And this is one of the things about hush puppies too, is they do float to the top, but sometimes they float to the top when they're not done all the way around. So we're gonna flip these over. When they get really pretty and golden brown like these are, we want them to get them brown all the way around. These look like they are ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. Have you got fish ready? Yes, ma'am, I've got the fish. Fish are already battered and we're ready to put them in. Let's remember on the hush puppies now, watch them because they will brown rather, rather fast sometimes because of that honey in there. It absolutely will, but they're, that's a wonderful flavor. Let me get these out of your way mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to go right in with that fish. Now that fish is gonna take a little while to gonna cook, isn't it? gonna take a little it? cook time on, this, on this, these crappies because they've got a real nice size to them. Ms. Phyllis, I think they've been cooking about four or five minutes. We're ready to pull them up and they are golden uh, brown. That looks so good. Look at that. And we have hush puppies on there. And I have the fork. And I'm the wild side gourmet, Tom Perdue. And I believe we're ready to do this one in too, Miss Phyllis. It's looking perfect. It's looking wonderful. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. 